Hello and welcome to Ikima Kanza of Magala Podcast Channel. My name is Amanda Masondo and I'm your host. We hope this podcast finds a way to impact, educate and inspire your next. My guest today is Wandi Lezondo, an entrepreneur and a co-founder of Feces Lifestyle. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda, for having me. And yeah, so looking forward. Are you to ready? Oh. Yeah, I'm yeah, born ready, I guess. I'm here now. Let's do it. Yes. First and foremost, where were you born? Where were you raised? And when do you think the entrepreneurial bug bit you? Okay, so I was born 1983, Coparaguana, Hospital, Kosoweto, uh, raised in the hood, uh, completed metric in the hood, opened up a business in the hood down the road from my mom's place, which is like 700 meters. And I have my place in the hood, two k's away from the shop. So my ecosystem is just like around Soweto. And the entrepreneurship bug beat me when my dad didn't save money for me for school. As an act of rebelliousness, I had to find a way for myself to express. And it so happened that fashion and then somehow there was an evolution from just fashion on how to build a business around your passion. And yeah, I guess that's when the entrepreneurship bug kind of hit me. It was just a way of moving away from the corner and falling pre to the same story that you don't have money to study and then you end up being in the corner and the things of the hood consume you and yeah and the story is gone potential that black kid who could have made it mm. so i just wanted to change that narrative sure i love that i've never heard of a background like that hmm? against all odds not <laughs> even you know like honestly speaking i think it's for me, it was a way I've, I grew up poor and growing up poor, I wanted to change certain things in my family. I made a point that certain things had to stop with me. Mm. And with that, it gave me an opportunity to be uncomfortable mm. and knowing that I had to be uncomfortable because the situation, I was already in an uncomfortable position. Yeah. So what was I scared of losing because I was already losing? Mm. Only win was that I could change my life and knowing that I had no one to blame but myself. So I was also fortunate enough that during that time of rebellion, I tapped into, I mean, 2000, 2001, there was just a huge thing, Rastafari, Black Consciousness, you know, the Lauren Hill days, Erica Padu days, Good the Bongo day. Muffin mm. days, you know, uh, Horror Cafe. Mm. So also, apart from that culture that was more associated with smoking weed, I must say, but there was a lot of sharing of books, mm. you know, that like were teaching us about who wears black people. Mm. And the realization of who wears black people kind of didn't sit well with me, that actually there was a system that was structured for us to be there. But do we keep on blaming the system, you know, because every probably nation that has been in probably the same situation, they took it to upon themselves to change their history. Mm. So for me, it was like, OK, the country was changing, it was democracy and all of that. But it was on me to tell my whole story in that, that what freedom meant for me. Mm. Free, for some people, freedom meant that they would have access to climbing the corporate ladder. People had access to BE, mm. people had access to tenders. Mm. But I think I've also, probably it's the traumas of growing up hard that I have always wanted to do things in a hard way. I wanted to build a business from nothing. And also for me, it, I just had a problem that with, why was I supposed to rely on the same white man that oppressed my people for years for my salary. Mm. You know, if they give me a salary, which means they're still keeping me under control. Yeah. Well, that was it came with being young and being naive to be like, no, I won't do this, but I'll do my own thing. But also the realization that when you do your thing, it required a lot of patience. And starting from at the bottom, because even in my family, there was no entrepreneur. 
mm. not even in my community. So the, Entrepreneur, the community, yeah. yeah. Entrepreneurship in the hood was reserved for the elite. Yeah. You know, the families that had shops and all of that. Corner house, big windows. You, that, that, that was it. And here you are. I mean, my parents, my, my mom was a tea lady. My dad was a machine operator in a cellotape factory. So who is this kid? Mm. You know, but I was like, no ways. You know, uh, fortunately enough, in 2000, when I started, 2001, because I started working at Edcon, Retail yeah. Associate, I was fortunate enough to realize that it was an information age. Google was there. So I got into Google probably 2004, 2005. Remember those internet cafes in town, five rand for an hour? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with my pocket money that I used to get at Adcon, was like, also with the thing with young people, they get jobs, they work for money. With me, when I got to Adcon, I knew I wouldn't make the money that was going to put change your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like an opportunity to learn. And also from a person who came from the hood, that was an exposure for me to be at the mall, being exposed to different people, different cultures, interacting with different people. That was a huge thing for me to open up another world for me. Mm. But fortunately, I wasn't scared. And because the, the relationship I had earlier on with knowing that I don't have money to go study, it kind of pushed me to fall in love with just reading, just buying books, help self-help books, books about certain subjects. So being based at Eastgate, it gave me an opportunity to spend time at CNA, just browsing through books, reading mm. books and all of that, because oh. I was on formation age, you know? Yeah. Uh, the internet wasn't that advanced to say you could get things as quickly as, as now. now. It yeah. was just building blocks, but first business plan I wrote in 2005, 2006, I just Googled by myself. Sure. I was 22, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Hectic. And then the idea that is thesis lifestyle now. How did that come about? Well, let's say, so 2000, I complete my trick. I don't have money to study. My uncle gets me a gig at, at, Go, uh, at Con. Mm -hmm. So when I started working at Adcon, there was Lokshin Fashion Passion, uh, which was like a comp run by Lokshin Culture, yeah. where they were unearthing young designers from the hood. For me, that was like, oh, so even with us, we can showcase. So mm. there was former business partner, Mang Aliso, mm. who used to be a fashion designer. So he was showcasing there. So I kind of liked that. And we became friends. Mm. And we had a friend also. I was working at Edgar's Eastgate. We had a friend that was working at Westgate. Yeah. And then Manu was doing fashion designing at Vets, mm. uh, at the art, uh, at the art campus, which was still in Ilof. Oh. So at, in Ilof, so we used to hang out there at the Ilof extension during Fridays because they would allow student friends and all of that. So we hang out with these art students, you know, we're into filming, graphic design and all of that. And for me as a boy from the hood, I was like, oh, so people can just make a living with drawing. People mm. can make a living Take with pictures. yeah, pulling stuff in a production company. And I fell in love with filming then. And also just the conversations that were happening there. It was just like everyone was like art. Everyone was find, trying to find a way to express themselves. And would share goals and dreams. Poetry was big at that time. You know, people just trying to find their feet, you know. And that was the inspiration. But the side of always learning and taking books, cousin of mine who's like still a mentor and business partner, guy who believed in me a long time ago, mm. Tabang, was like, introduced me to reach that poor dad. And that flipped everything about my life. Mm. It just like it put away the self pity or witty of fundanga or na metriki, just show it on the side. The most important thing is financial literacy. Because it kind of painted a picture of people that were, were regarded as high up in the food chain. Mm. But when like you realize that, okay, they only good in terms of their personal skills, but mm. not with money skills. Mm. Money skills is just a different ball game. Mm. So my quest was that I wanted to understand 
how money works mm. how you know and the simplicity of money is just what was that with that book focus at building an asset and like uh, it's assets based liabilities yeah. you know and from then my life was like kind of shaped you know the risk i would take money money conversations for me are just totally different from that from that day mm. it's like so how do you build an asset an asset for instance it could be stocks could be real estate but the biggest one that i thought it had biggest advantages was a business because mm. with a business you can ha have a business the byproduct of any successful business is profits so you just have to focus at running your business if your business gets successful it only successful because it's making profit. profit yeah. And at that time, I didn't have responsibilities and all of that. Life was fun and all of that. I just did that. Mm. I'm building this asset. I don't know how, where it will go and all of that. And understanding accounting, you know, uh, profit is just like sales minus cost of sales. <laughs> you don't want to change Simple, that, yeah. right? Don't try to be fancy. And with that, for me, it was just like a lesson of learning about money and learning also that there's good debt, bad debt. So, which was a big mistake, but a blessing. So I find that the business credit card debt. Yeah. That's a credit card, makes them out. When credit was cheap, they used to just send you a credit card. Yeah, just to call executives. <laughs> nice, is your keeper. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm young yeah. and I have dreams. Come on. I'm not going to be waiting for people to give me money. Come on, man. And I'm not taking this money to blow up. You yes. know, it's like, yeah. And that was probably one of the biggest mistakes. I wouldn't recommend to anyone, yeah. but it has taught me to even today to not have credit. Mm. Even today, I don't mm. operate in credit. But it was a stepping stone that you needed. That, because I got listed. I knew how to deal with credit. I was phoning you Yo. from running away to taking the calls making debt arrangements yeah yeah having to be uh taken out of your company in terms of the cc because you are the rotten potato yeah. you can't do anything it doesn't work right. do those things and at that point you remember uh, i think putumanati shares yes i bought putumanati shares the you might get, get... yeah i mean why not yeah uh, Man, yeah, for yes. me, that was the Can whole point. Pay, it's yeah. like interest, I'll pay it with my own money. But these shares, it's an investment, long term. Yeah. But the business, I think, 2018 tanked, and I went to cash out those shares to save the business, mm. you know. And But my journey is just, just like even now, uh, learning about financial literacy and not overexposing myself. Mm. And so... That translates to the business, hence we would survive COVID, would, you know, we are able to, so that was like a lesson because everything that happens in your life, it's probably, it might have an impact at that given time, but some things you'll just see the impact over the years, mm. you know, so the 18 years I've been in street culture, I take it as an apprentice, uh, I'm still learning yeah. and it's just like, Waking up every day, knowing that you want to learn, you want to do new things. It's mm. just what keeps me going. Lovely. Lovely. A little birdie tells me that you wanted to study computer engineering. Yeah. So how did we go from there no. to now running? So my cousin, business. you must understand, my cousin, uh, who I say invested, uh, believed yeah, in me. Bang. Yeah. So Tabang just recently retired. He was a CIO at... Uh, West Bank at one point, I think he just finished 10 Standard Bank. So he had went as far as the top of yeah. the IT spectrum. Yes. And he had started from the same family. Uh, I remember when Tabang, there was a computer programming school called Zakeni Luso. The old school programmers who did mainframe, COBOL, they came from that school mm. in the late 80s, early 90s. So Tabang was from that school. And he used to, when he went, started studying, he used to come back every two days, watch this one pair of denim. Yeah. Because that was the only clothes he's got. Yeah. And so this guy was like able to just like break everything in front of him. So in your family, if you have someone like that, you're going to be one. 
You're gonna marry him, yeah. You know? Yeah. Unfortunately, it's Tabang actually Luma Magam Land with that law. I got fun with the next thing. Yeah. I got fun with fun. Tabang is like, I'm fun. Oh, my agents programming. Just don't do computers. Oh. I just think when you'll be good in fashion. But now, fashion, you must understand one thing. It's either you are good or you are not good. But I've got a friend, also in the sales house, community sales house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was a senior manager at Mzi Mas. So I was like, go talk to him. I went to talk to Mzi. So Mzi was like, when I sat down with Mzi, so, I mean, didn't know much. I, when I knew fashion, mm. it was like, fashion, you make clothes. Yeah. But... We also painted the picture now to even understand Edgar's better because he was telling me different roles. That people play in that organization. Yeah, that fashion, you, you can make a living, but be a trend forecaster. You know, you can just be a stylist. You can just be a designer and not make clothes. Uh, so I was like, oh, so I don't have to. But the f nice thing about me, I was like, actually, I want to own a business and employ all those people. Yeah. That was the question. Sure. Because, I mean, that wasn't the goal, isn't it? She wanted you yeah, to but as Anuma, break these generational cases that were happening. Manja, our science, computer science. But it's not like it was... There were no guarantees, computer yeah. science, you know? And Tabang, I think, he saw it. He saw it, like, he, he kind of saw it. And, and he said, I must run with it. And also, it's not like he says run with it. He's like offering advice from someone who was in the industry yeah. and all of that. And that's what I also say, uh, tell kids today, because I find a lot of kids say, please mentor me, mentor me. I'm like, depends well, how you look at mentorship. You know, mentorship could be books. Mm -hmm. It depends. Mentorship, I've always had mentors, like, for instance, mentioning one, election culture. Mm -hmm. In 365 days, I would probably meet no one once, and that would probably not last more than an hour. Yeah. But whatever conversation that would have there, it would last. Me, really? It would last me for over maybe a year or two because of action steps. I mean, I still have when Tavi was still part of Luxian culture, mm. probably in Twitter, because I had diaries. I still have those diaries mm. where Chavi wrote a business model for me. Like this, 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 this. I was looking at that only now, 20 years later, yeah. we are shifting to that business model. Sure. So it's not like things, that's why I'm saying things that happen in a previous life, mm. they manifest themselves. They find a way they of coming on, yeah. back and shaping you as a person. Sure. So based on your own personal entrepreneurial journey, based on what you know now, how would you describe the state of entrepreneurship in this current state? Wow. I think we don't have enough. It's just not enough. Mm. And, and I know why. Why? Because we don't have tough people. We want people that want it quick. We want people that want fame. We want people that want to be flashy on social media. We, yeah, we, 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 mm. we want to show success. No one wants to show the back door hours where you put in all the hours. Everyone wants success, but no, not a lot of people are willing to pay the price. And I blame it on social media because they've made everything to be fast. Mm. You know, because people can go on social media, get a thousand views mm. and think that will translate to real life. You know, whereas entrepreneurship, for an e-commerce, yeah, you can do that. Mm. That business exists because of the competing world and all of that. Yeah. Everything can be controlled, the competing world. But certain things still need a human touch, a human element. You need you to, to work hard. You need you to put in work. So I just feel like a breed of entrepreneurs, it's just a special breed of people. Mm. I could have quit a long time ago. Mm. I know for sure. I, I, I know for sure the sacrifices that I've been through. Even to, to this day, I mean, the sacrifices that I'm in, you know. I spend most of my life right now living around the parks area. Mm -hmm. So my kids go to school there, my boy plays soccer there. My lifestyle is pretty much based there. My friends, if even now when I go out, fetch my dog, my boy is mm -hmm. just there. And, and 
go green side to your friend there's another friend we even call it a belt because yeah. the boys are living in the belt yeah i'm the only one who's not in the belt right now yeah and for me it's not like the delayed gratification thing you know i don't want to rush but i can't get into the belt and just like he's hard because i'm chasing what's is what the group mentality is at now mm. but i just don't function it's not part of your journey it's you i don't function well like get review so you know that that's i don't it. yeah i don't fu- no i don't function like that also mm-hmm. like i'm just one thing that i'm just like i've been consistent with all my life is to be true to myself mm. you know and maybe we stab on wolves or like two kids to not to be stubborn nah. to to be aggressive yeah I kind of take that and shape that to be stubborn about to say I won't quit this. Mm. You know, and I haven't quit and and I feel like that's why we won't have a lot of entrepreneurs. I just feel like there's just not enough people that understand what it takes. Mm. And and entrepreneurship, I mean, out of 10, so out of 10 only one business make it in 5 years mm. that's that's true mm. so even if you can say some of my entrepreneurship must call it simply means one is one like is giving yeah out of 5 years yeah. so out of 10 years bro that one is not even Less, there yeah so i know that story so this is not like it's the best brand there's nothing best about us no there's nothing mm. if you think about it mm. it's just that we've just kept on playing mm. when everyone was quitting we keep on playing and when people are asking which brand is there that represents south african it's like this is because mm. it's just the only it's brand that's been there in existence yeah so that's the winning formula for us apart that i would want work anyone mm. yeah that hard work is just like engraved in me in you, second yeah. part of nature i always say i'm not good in anything mm. but i'll outwork anyone give me anyone who's in the street culture game yeah. that we have to go Hit pound on pound it's like it's just i know i know and also that comes from what the running thing mm. it's just like the reflection of running because i think my pain threshold is like coming from running yeah you know i can take entrepreneurship that about that you got to take pain you got to stick it in you, you you have you have to find ways you know to solve problems you know creative ways because everyone would think creative is artist and Yeah. No creative way. I'll tell you of a creative way that we used to do to solve problems. So remember that this is social jam sessions. Yes. Uh which like had a huge impact in the South African art scene and all of that comedy, live performances and all of that. How we used to operate our jam session. We, we never used to have money to stock alcohol. Yeah. Uh, for the gig. Yes. So what I used to do uh before we even build a relationship with the bottle store I used to go to my mom before I son doing. Yeah. So I would time me with you and in son doing 30 minutes before I son doing. Nyeza ngoba nyazi ujahlile. Yeah. Ngeka lowa question ngini. Ma, ngiyaqela ngenkinga manje, qela ngimbole ku 5000. Sa sekseni ma emsebenzini ngo 6 uzoyithola. Yeah. Cuz we wanted to take that money go buy alcohol yes. and then hopefully the gig makes money and then, and then I can pay my mom. Yes. And unfortunately enough, fortunately enough, there was never a day my mama would say no six and I told my dad. So that was a creative way of solving a problem. And then that kind of built trust with the bottle store mm. to allow us now for us to go to him without money, use the same model to say by the time you open tomorrow Monday at nine, we'll be here with your money. Mm. So it's like an account of less than 24 hours. if you think about it and the jam session grew and all of that so yeah so also reached that point that there's book smart and street smart you yeah. choose which one so for me the two have merged you yeah, can't have the one and leave the other Making. i was telling my friends this now you know you have friends in all spheres of life yeah uh, educated friends love and love yeah so there's this group here too uh, it's a funny group and all of that so we were talking so there's one guy who's doing his phd there yes. so he asked the question i was like guys you must be honest this guy in the next coming few years we won't be relevant to him yeah because the conversation is so fun i seen as this of me to stuff like we not he must associate with those people and all of that and what i said was that 
probably even here now, you guys have met uh, degrees. I've mm. said that. I try to make sure I'm the only one with metric mm. because it's going to be a problem once we start making decisions as matriculants <laughs> only. Yeah. So once you have people that have been to a higher education, and of which higher education, I think for me, is just there to teach people critical thinking. Mm -hmm. So when I'm around those people, it makes me uncomfortable. Mm. It, and then it allows me to be a sponge, to always be absorbing, absorbing, to be that guy in the room who knows that he doesn't know a lot. Yeah. It's an opportunity for him to, to learn. learn. So it's yeah. always been like that. Sure. Mm. So at the beginning of your entrepreneurial journal, uh, journey, were there some factors um, you noted that hindered your start? Always. Mali, you know, oh no, Mali. There's no customers, there's no structure. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing. Yeah. You know, you, you, there was nothing, everything that you can think of. I mean, there was no structure. The only thing that was there was an idea. Mm. You know, it's just that, like, I always, I look back now, it's like when I look at my kids, they're growing, one is seven, the baby girl is turning three today. Yeah. It's like, it just was just a cell. And here you are, you are shaping this cell, and this cell, you can see yourself in that. Mm. So forget the kids. I've had that with thesis. Unfortunately, it's not a human being, but I've seen that and how it can impact people's life. Mm. So it's just like, you can tell me of a lot of things, but self-belief and tapping into that space in your brain is something else. And mm. I, think, I just think that, not that some people are born better than the others. Yeah. But it's just that some people believe in themselves more than the others. We all have it. Yeah. No human being is greater than the other. Yeah. I believe me, you. We all have it. You, if today you wanted to do something twenty times better than this is, you can. Mm. It's just a self belief. Yeah. You know, uh, I tell people now that once you 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 can't really think when you're doing something, you can't think of only South Africa now. Black Coffee has shown us it can be done. Nelson has showed us it can be done. Trevor has shown us it can be done. Mambazo have been doing it for years and years and no if one and no one and no yeah. one comes to say actually the blueprint was Lady Smith Black Mambazo. Because yeah. today our generation sees the Grammys and they're like, Grammys, Grammys. I'm like, guys, I'm, I'm from Lady Smith, so I grew up listening to Lady Smith Black Mambazo. Yeah. So I knew that, that was part of my DNA mm. to say, yeah, Grammys were possible. Mm. Yeah, these guys from Refontaine, yes. even not even Lady Smith, Refontaine is like a, yeah. and they made it. So it. it's just like that the blueprint is there. Mm. You know, the internet has made this world so small. Yeah. So as kids from the hood, of which is our biggest thing now, mm. how do we take this brand from the hood? Yeah. And make it to live into an international consciousness. Okay, global. That's so those obstacles that you that you that you noted, I mean the lack of funds. Do you think these these are the same obstacles that could hinder businesses that are trying to get in now? Are this are the issues still the same? It's not gonna change. Especially for black kids. Mm. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, sorry, but for black kids it's not gonna change. Mm. It's not gonna change because even how the banking is structured from fact that based on the color of your skin, sadly enough, we are talking about this 2023, we say the country is free and access to the economy and all of that. Banking works like that. Yeah. The color of your skin determines your risk. As oh. simple as that. Yeah. So for the fact that it's still like that simply means you are disadvantaged. Yeah. For us as a brand, I can tell you now and also you learn. So when your cash flow is up, we've learned that we must make sure that we, we extend our credit limits. Mm. Not that we are going to use it, but for dark days, because they're not going to give us money. Yeah, when, when we need it. Yeah. You know, and also, yes, the system is like that, but also on our side as new entrepreneurs, it's very important that we take ourselves seriously and set up systems that will allow us just to have management accounts because once you go look for money your accounting i always say financial statements 
are an x-ray to any business. If you want to understand what how this business is doing, mm -hmm. you just like financial statements. I can talk to Tawang, to tell him my dreams and all of that. Yeah. All he says is like, because he's got an MBA, yeah. he'll be like, just give me your financial statements. You know what the numbers say. And then you just look at the financial statements and tell me, okay, what are the ratios of this and all of that? And then he will just say, go fix this, go fix this. Mm. So it's important. So you can't say you go, you look full of imad now. How are you going to maximize that return, mm. uh, that investment? That investment, yeah. So, you know? So it's that. It's those things are like that. This thing, because systematic things, cannot stop you following your dreams. Your journey should be should, should be defined by you overcoming all of those obstacles. Mm. You know, you don't become great just like mm. you woke up and then your journey was smooth. Yeah. You have to overcome that. So for me, lack of funding is part of the journey. If you say that you are going to be an entrepreneur, you have to make it. Mm. You know, the nice thing is that when you draw a business plan, you tell everyone that the business is going to make this money and all of that. And I tell people, that's why when they advise you in doing a business plan, have working capital for at least six months. Yeah. Like some I learned to learn. Imagine when I'm always business plan. Why about to give any money to run business in a cent? Yeah, my salary is in a cent for six months. Yeah. That's because that's how business is right. in nature. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't make money in the first few years. Yeah. So you haven't told us thesis. What is it? Because the the word after the word after thesis, life stack, it's not a coincidence, not an accident. It's an evolution, like mm. a, it's an evolution. Like maybe thesis might change one day. I just don't like to the name thesis is fine, mm. but probably the add-ons might change. You mm. know, our trading registered companies thesis clothing. Mm. So that's yeah. we're selling clothes. Our core business even now is still clothes. Yeah. So our core business is clothes. How we kind of break down our business, we break it down into four quadrants. The first two quadrants, which is clothing and retail. So it's the clothing that we make and then we have three retail stores. Yeah. And then the bottom tier, we call it like the fun stuff, the social impact. So you have events, you've got a uh, social impact. And you know, our social impact is not us waking up to go give money to charity and all mm -hmm. Social impact is like, let's wake up, let's go run. Let's wake up, let's cycle. You know, let's plant into an art, let's buy art from our mm -hmm. friends and all of that. You know, events, it's like, how do we, culture that we like, how do we do things around that? So the first two tier quadrants are the quadrants that are making money mm -hmm. for us to enjoy the other part at the bottom. So that's how the brand evolved from just clothing to a lifestyle brand because running became, but it's more of an extension of who we were because mm. we realized that uh, in street culture, when you look at street culture globally, this common threads that you see, you know, and then you realize, oh, actually, it's not like these guys are just copying stuff from anywhere. Mm. It's stuff that more you out if you fall baller and you want to continue playing soccer how do you plug it in into your ecosystem mm. so that was it and the cycling culture i mean i can tell you now uh, for a fact that running wasn't as cool as it is now 10 years ago of course yes. and i can tell you now that running changed when there was that run chosy thing mm. at nike I think 2012, yeah, 2012, 2013. And then there was this new thing of run crews and all of that. So we are the second run crew after Bramfi Runners. And yeah. Bramfi Runners was started by Nike. So we were like, let's start, this is run crew in the hood. Mm. Change perception of moving in the hood. In the lifestyle. Mm. Yeah, people must move, you know. Uh, people drink too much, people party a lot, and they're not moving. How? And that's where the social impact was. Mm. But that, I had never stopped running. If there's yeah. one thing in my life, one constant in my life, except oxygen and me, it's just running, guys. Yeah. I've never stopped running. Right. Through running, I can tell you now I've saved my life. Mm. I've changed my life. I've met people. Uh, yeah, 
I've just done a lot of things, you know, and through running, I see what I see now from where I am. I don't have to stand in the tallest building to say that, but I see that and I'll be like, I'm so grateful that mm. this has had a huge impact. Yeah. It has had an impact in, in the numbers of comrades today. People never thought, my generation, you know, my cool, the comrades are not so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. it became us. We were those people. You know, I, I, I never thought I would run comrades in my 30s, mm. but I ran comrades. You know, I thought comrades was reserved. Now you find 20 year olds running comrades. Right. So that on its own, it's like the impact that we've had. People didn't, didn't think cycling was cool. Mm. But now you see cycling shops, people are cycling and not the Lycra cycling, but the cool kind of cycling or single speed. We've had an impact on that. Yeah. Starting that culture. I mean, I, I grew up in Soweto and I never, never imagined that there would be a cycling you know, yeah. thing going on. It's happening. Yeah. You know, and I'm happy with that. This is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. People go in business for cheap dominant profits, but I've probably I'm pushed by the impact more. So I've had an impact in that and that's how the lifestyle part of this is is. The clothing, I mean you can just Google that, it can tell you a lot of stuff, but how they mixed it, everything. Yeah. It's just like the lifestyle is us, basically. Yeah. Our extension of who we are. Lekha, Lekha is a DJ. Yeah, I always say she's I like, know that. she's like a tastemaker. Yeah, 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 no, she's like, you're one of those guys. Uh, I call him, to some extent, I call him the teacher. Mm. His music taste is like, yeah. like way proper from house to lounge and, you know, he used to be the one who used to do the lineups and all of that. So mm -hmm. even his music taste. And now, I mean, he's the one who introduced me crazy into art. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's into wine. I'm not there. That's fine. You know. Yeah, but we're not saying we can't have, we can't plug that into the brand. Mm. Uh, the wine thing. Mm. You know, if we are going to tell a story in a nice way, in a responsible way as a brand yeah it's possible it's possible yeah. on the supply side um where are you sourcing your goods yeah um and what has that experience been like for you harsh hard to a point that we've given up I'll, I'll be honest with you yeah we've given up so for the past 18 years for the past 18 years we done mostly all of our manufacturing in South Africa. Mm. And only from this year, we've moved out. Mm. We've moved out, uh, but it's not the whole business. So our supply chain is like this. Our bucket heads, mm. we manufacture them in-house. Yeah. So everything. So with our business growth, plus four years, we we're able to acquire a property in Soweto. Mm. And then we made it our small factory where our t-shirt printing, we do it in-house. Mm -hmm. Also, we do all our fats manufacturing in-house. So only now we started manufacturing our t-shirts in Mauritius. Mm. And also the reason why we went to Mauritius is the price yeah. and the quality. Mm. We've tried South Africa. Yeah. We've tried to work with South African companies. And unfortunately, I will say it, it's the South African thing. Mm. In color plays a huge role. It, to a point where money has skin color, I never knew that. Uh, our value to some of our suppliers, they've just never taken us mm. seriously. Mm. You know, uh, we had an incident whereby we're increasing our value of our order, but the supplier, when instead of putting in a discount for us, yeah. he was actually saying, No, actually, you're I'm doing a lot for you guys. Actually, yeah, while we're increasing our order. So that thing kind of sparked that thing that, you know what, we are not appreciated. Mm. Let's just go over.
in Mauritius. Yeah. So when we were doing the Pata collab last year, the Pata guys kind of hooked us up with their supplier mm. uh, in Mauritius. So some of the stuff now we we're gonna keep everything in house. Some of the stuff like the bucket has the mm. printing in house but source the t-shirts somewhere else. And then the other stuff, manufacturing in terms of the clothes, uh, we're using local brands, uh, local suppliers. So I would safely say 80% of our production is local though. It's local, yeah. Sure, so unfortunate. It's still local, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, it's like, our country is just like operating in silos. That's also a problem. Everyone wants, to work independently, no one wants to make everything. Yeah. I think, you see, collabor- that's also one thing about, co- I think collaboration has been overused in my field, mm. you know, in terms of clothing collabs. Mm. Collaborations are every day, guys, because there's nothing that you, you accomplish alone. So even this interview is a collaboration. 100%. So... I think the word collaboration is just being overused. It's not. You don't need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's short yeah. now, yeah. No, no, no. We collaborate. You, you, you collaborate for the fact that even on the road, you collaborate with other drivers to give each other time to drive and all of that, you know? Yeah. So it's not that I'm not saying they don't want to collaborate, but yeah. they don't want to share the same vision and the same goal, yeah. you know, to say we all want to win. But it's the mentality of survival as well. Everyone wants to survive independently and make it on their own, and which is like not possible to be. Nah, it's not. It's not sustainable for a long term. Yeah, it's sustainable for a short term. Yeah, and like I said, I'm not in the game for short term. (laughs) We spoke about e-commerce earlier on. Mm. How has that avenue allowed you to scale up your business? I think it's. It's on a rise. It's definitely on a rise. We we ship mm. quite a few orders. Uh, we bank through our payment gate mm-hmm. that we I know that is doing well because whenever the cash flow is dry, I'm like, hey, let's go check at the payment gate. Let's yeah. pull money and whatever we pull is nice to yeah. keep us going at that time. Yeah. So it's really growing nicely. It just needs to be taken care of. I always say also is e-commerce is on the rise, but yeah. do we have the right tools on our side? So when I look at our website, we haven't updated it in terms of the layout mm. and it's not like it's a bad website, mm. but I don't think it was moving with the times. Right. And so it's not on the faults is not with e-commerce. It's introspection, fix your website make it relevant to the consumer, but the consumer can tell you now it's buying. Yeah. If they're buying, uh, I won't lie to you. It it can only grow. It can like, but at currently I think e-commerce is 15% of our business. Mm. 15% of our business uh, is 65% comes from retail. Mm. Actually not even full or is 60%. Yeah. For all the other two stores are catching up, but not yeah, yeah, ten, ten, yeah. yeah. But, because it's is simple because you want to capture the whole experience. That's why. Yeah, yeah, the- yeah. I love, I love that that idea. But I can tell you now, uh, that experience is no longer what it's no longer what I wanted it to be. Mm. It has changed so much. You know, that corner, you know, so yeah. corner lum club. Yeah. I, I, I even say sometimes ni na ni corner lum club to na see this is that way this is cafe. Because the one person corner lum club has got their own mindset, yeah, you know. Yeah. And yeah. and also like you cannot take that away. It's what it's the DNA of the hood. Mm. There's guys that grew up at the corner. Mm. You're not gonna chase and them that away. Corner, it's a generational thing, yeah. you know. Uh there's kids right now, because it's a funny thing about the corner as well, you know, you might look at it as a corner, but that corner, I always say, Aliki Kornel Fanan in the sense that different people from all walks of life, they hang out there. And then you even ask yourself, why Lorna? Because you have a doctor that's just there every day. Yeah. When he comes from work. Yeah. You have a police guy mm. who's just there. You have guys that are doing the other stuff, they're chilling with that guy. It's just like you chill there if you don't know, you're like, 
Kisaba man, yenyi ndo like right like yeah. So but I've realized that corner is a corner where people get stressed and they want to offload there. Yeah. You know, you meet different characters like from all different walks of life and it's just a diversity that I see in that corner. Probably that makes me go there every day. But to a certain extent, mm. I honestly think that corner has kind of jumped over what the brand stands for. Mm. Yeah. Because now the shop is like a shop. You have to come in buying out. Yeah. And the lifestyle element of it, it's kind of not. But we're working on it. There is a serious plan yes. that we're working on it. Hopefully in the next two years, we yeah, want to change that. Yeah. And, then, and in that, the goal is simple. I want to go back to do what I love, building culture, mm. having fun, do mm. the cool stuff, mm. you know, do events and all of that. And how we plan to do that, get a distribution deal. Mm. So our business growth, if you're going to ask that okay. question, is focused at getting a distribution. So wait for me. No, 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 it's, you know, these things, it's an ecosystem. They link to each other. They, you know, that could be yes. sad. Yes. So, yeah, but I mean, our plan is that get mm. a distribution deal. Mm. Uh, once we get a distribution deal, try to focus on that for the next two, three years, and then try to break into the international market. Mm. take the brand globally so the thesis story for the next 10 years is like how do we hit new york la, LA uh, amsterdam yeah. berlin mm. yeah paris <laughs> paris you have to you know i went to paris you know i will tell you something about tell paris me. i'll tell you something about paris yeah see the song niggas in paris mm. uh kanye and jay-z when i got to paris i understood why so Paris is like different pockets. It's, it's, there's Europe, there's Europe, there's everywhere else. And then but I think the French man style, everything. The French people like they've just like luxury. If you want to understand what luxury is, mm. just go to Paris. It's just like the whole of Paris is just like that. It's it's not diamond dog. Only Paris is just like diamond dog everywhere. The whole like like for me, it was a huge culture shock, guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. Because uh, I was just like doing a Euro tour mm. and I got to experience different cities. But when I got to Paris, I got to realize that like, actually Paris is totally different for the whole of Europe. Mm. Even other Europeans want to be in Paris, you know, that's yeah. so, but I'm not saying you won't go to Paris. Yeah. I'm not saying you won't go yeah. to Paris. Part of the plan. We'll <laughs> get there when the time is right. You know, we're moving slowly, we're not rushing this thing. Yeah. You know? yeah. Lovely. Um, so let's talk about the textile market. Um, historically, access to capital and breaking into new markets has been difficult, especially with the decline of the South African textile um, industry. How are you na navigating that hurdle? As I mentioned before, we've got an in-house production. Yeah. Uh, I try to control what you can control, mm. what you can't control, build relationships to to outsource and also the South African textile industry wasn't built for small brands to thrive. The South African fashion uh, industry was built for chain stores, mm. you know, but I'm glad that most of them are caving in now because they relied so much on those cheap imports. Mm. Edgar's is gone. They're trying to, you know, uh, start a was out mm. out of the game mm. long time ago so i just feel like the future of the textile and industry in south africa these guys will be forced to source local brands plug into their chain stores mm. and that's a win for us because the kids now i like the fact that five years ago our people didn't believe so much in our brands. Mm. It's like that thing of made in China back in the day. Yeah. We always thought made in China was inferior quality. Yeah. But that mindset, it's, it's crazy, like how people believe in local brands. You know, the only thing that's left, local brands must work on quality to chase that global standard. Mm. And then once we get into that, I tell you now, for those capitalists, big retailers, mm. they'll be forced to tap into us and uplift us. Because mm. not everyone can build 
the K-Way story. I just feel like the best, one of the best stories ever in South Africa, probably in the past 20 years. I'm not going to talk about the Jonathan Dees and yeah. others, but K-Way and what is done with the outdoors. Uh, so do you? I don't think it's like, if you remember when, what's this, Cape Union Mart, yeah. it used to house all the top outdoor brands. Yeah. But that was a strategy for them to learn, take those things, make better quality. Come probably 10 years, 15 years down the line, you, you don't find any outside brand. Everything is K-Way. K mm. That's the story everyone wants. You know, it's the same story that we see in countries that overtake uh, people that were leading. You know, the Japanese exactly did that with American culture. They adopted, they embraced the American culture, but they made it 10 times better. Mm. Because the Japanese way is like a way of just like doing better, working hard. So I think that's the future. That's my prediction. Mm. But if you don't have that money, or if you have that money, so to say, if you have that money, build your own, your own system. Yeah. But not everyone is that money. The money still belongs to those guys. Yeah. But they learn, it's fine. It's fine, they can keep it for now. We're, for, we're fetching it, we're fetching no, it. No, 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 they can't keep it. It needs to come back in the economy. Yeah. You know, that's how money works mm. at the end of the day. We can't, as I say, money has no color. If everyone has the same mutual benefit, mm. let's take away color. Let's invest. Let's all eat, share the same profits. Yeah. That's it. Okay, there again. I want to talk before we wrap up about consumer confidence. Um, we've seen that lately consumers are extremely concerned about the country's economic status, what they're buying, what they're... Are you guys feeling it in your sales at all? <laughs> it's the craziest thing. Then consumer confidence also goes with who is in charge of the country. The Zuma times were the nice times. Sorry to say that. No, 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 no. It's even a conversation I had with the guys. I don't know if you know Partizan in Parkes, the yes. guys of Palladium and all of that. Yes. They're like, guys, you know, I think this my era. The money was nice, man. And, you know, it's a serial guy, huh? The money is not nice. You know? Yeah. So I guess the consumer confidence is low, guys. Go, go bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad, guys. Like, it's just that with me, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm not laughing. Yeah. I'm not laughing. But it's bad. Like, it's so bad. Like, and the sad reality is that it's bad because people also just are just buying unnecessary things. Like, yeah. People are just like into this consumer culture of just buying things that are necessary. And now we are feeling it. And if we thought COVID yeah. was bad, we haven't seen anything, guys. We must keep it tight for the next coming two, three years. Yeah. Only from about 2020, yeah, 2027. Oh. I think now we must just float. Keep it like this. Mm. If you can, Scale spike up. it. Spike yeah. it up. It's good for you. Mm. Me, I'm not on that tip. For me, keep the doors open. Pay salaries. Make sure you don't owe anyone. Just keep the brand like this. I was actually about to ask you. That's my pay. goal. When you put a motivation or something that you want to tell him to do. When I looked at Lava to Ice Cartel would motivate and he's like, he's born in it. I said, not exactly that. But, but hey man, tighten your seatbelt. Yeah. Stay put. Don't. What am I? Just focus on what you are good at. Yeah. For now. For now, like for now, we have elections next year. A lot still going to change, you know? And I think as a country, we're in a huge mess and we downplay it. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, you know, Kona Shinta wrong, but it's fine. I won't say it, but yeah. she said, Boo. <laughs> that's it. Like, you know, we, are, yeah, we, are, we, 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 we we might take it it's just that we are we are positive people yeah but like it's bad guys like it's really bad like i was looking at like a survey they were just talking about the black middle class i was like oh 
It's just bad. Yeah. I, you're right. You know, money that we have. Money that we have. Only three days. And my and main now. issue, it's creating a generation that will work f- up until they're in the seventies, because people now are getting to their savings. That what the was my savings mm. money to cover mm. all these debts and all of that. And we we're not coping. Mm. We we are not coping. You know, we're not coping to such an extent. Uh, not too sure about the future. Honestly speaking, you know, uh, I was just saying to you that. Do you still want to complain about ESCOM? Yeah, but mm. but not on its own is bad because it has affected. But it's a norm now. You can't mm. be complaining about mm. ESCOM. Mm. You know, and my main thing is that once you realize how first world countries operate, I'm a politician right now. Like now, okay. It's like these guys, like Unembeza Ugu, if you like. Yeah. For this, that's all. That's all I'm saying. Like Unembeza Ugu, if you like. Like we cannot have, because that's the thing with South African culture. I want to praise about which ah, hello, it's Kakusha Banyetina, who driver in, Wenzan, Wenzan. Have a shwe. I'm on scrap. I want to have a Same guy is implicated. I want to be Yeah. You yeah. know, you have schools. You know, that's the thing. It's like people want to be like singing praises for these guys that are messing up. Like yeah. it's the same guys. You know the problems that we have in the country. And if persons are low on killing my problems, pillan away every day, marangas bakombe. Instead, we go sing praises for them and say, Unsuem Buban Ba, no one, Unsuem Buban, Unsuem. So I don't, I'm not too sure in my house. I don't celebrate such things, you yeah. know. Thank you so much, Wandile. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Wandile Zondo, entrepreneur and co-founder of Pieces Lifestyle.